Hey everyone, thanks for checking us out. You know us, it's the Commander's Brew. Uh, you know, around here, we're throwing a little comedy your way, we're throwing you some budget deck techs. Um, you know, and nothing's different this week because here comes Halana and Sengir Death Touch. Hope you like it. Check it out. All right, let's talk about this week's deck tech. It's Halana, Kessig Ranger, and Sengir, uh, the Dark Baron. This is another partner uh, commander combination from Commander Legends, of course. Uh, we're kind of finishing those up now. I mean, there's obviously countless uh, uh, pairings we could have gone with. These are a couple that um, obviously just that we like to highlight. We, we That really sparked our creativity, the ones we've been doing over the last few weeks. So anyways, Halana, Sengir, um, yeah, we're leaning on Death Touch this time around, and that's going to make a lot of sense, I think, when you uh, when you read Halana's ability. Uh, so let's just get into that. Um, Halana, Kessig Ranger, three and a green, legendary human archer, three four with reach. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay two generic. When you do, that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. So. We're basically like a, a war storm surge in green that you do have to pay a little bit for, right? So it's not free. Uh, but uh, a powerful ability when we're talking about, you know, the fact that we don't have to include, I mean, not that it was really that bad to include red in the first place, but we can just take green and something else and go forward with this, right? We're not leaning on, on, on the, the color red to be involved. So that's what we did here. We went just straight up Golgari. And we paired this with Sangir. The Dark Baron. There was a couple ones that we were thinking about for this. Um, we were talking in the Discord. We had a couple ones pop up, but uh, I I went with like a late, late audible into Sangir. At one point, we had like uh, Ravos. We had a we had a white um, uh, angle to this. We had some white cards going in, but eventually, I just felt like it wasn't really worth the the, the third color that we just took that out of there. And uh, yeah, like went straight Golgari for it. So, Sean, why don't you read a Sangir, the Dark Baron? Sure. Singir is a four black black legendary vampire noble, a flying four four. Whenever another creature dies, put two plus one plus one counters on Singir the Dark Baron. And whenever another player loses the game, you gain life equal to that player's life total as the turn began. Partner. So this it's very menacing when you have Singir out and someone begins their turn that's like, so uh what's your life total right now? Okay. <laughs> Okay, just checking. <laughs> so, like, like, just double asking that looming question just because, like, well, why are you asking? It's like, because we're going to need to know if I destroy you this turn. <laughs> this is, uh, Sengir is such an interesting commander. I think when you look at it at first, that first ability is just kind of like, okay, sure, when it dies, it gets a bit bigger. No big deal. I mean, two, one, two plus one plus one counters is, is, is uh, significant, you know, it gets... Yeah, it's on a commander, so the, exactly. you know, this thing gets big fast. It's, it's more significant than you think, that's for sure. Like, there's a red card that also puts two plus plus one counters on. Um, when it hits a cre when it hits a player, there's like a red vampire that does that, and every yeah. game I've ever seen that card in, it it's it gets out of control large very quickly. Anyway, so... This is half Yeheni, and Yeheni gets enormous. Exactly. So... So, so that's a good that's a good ability, and it's one that it's actually the reasons in the it's it's our partner commander in this in this deck, but that second ability is funny. It's funny. I think like there's a lot of um, usage for that in other types of decks. In this deck, like whatever, if we can kill someone, great. But um, but it's it's very interesting that uh, you could build around that, and that that might be something to look out for in the future. Because uh, I kind of realized it as I was looking through it and looking at this card. I think it's a neat a neater ability than we give it credit for. Anyways, uh, so. We got Halana, we got Sangir. So the, the idea here is with our Death Touch creatures and with Halana's ability and with some other supporting cards, we want to be killing our opponent's creatures. And in killing our opponent's creatures effectively with Death Touch and like the come into the battlefield thing and all that, we'll obviously be clearing the way. We'll be getting those creatures out of the way and that'll clear our way for attacks. And also it'll allow us to activate our payoff creatures and some are both. And Sengir is the perfect partner because he does both things. We are rewarded for having uh, creatures die, other creatures. Uh, and we are, and obviously, we are rewarded by um, getting this guy through because he's he gets massive and that he just can kill. So sometimes it's as simple as that. Sometimes it's a little more convoluted. And that's why we love Commander. So 
let's talk about just setting the scene here first. Just uh, so there's not a, not a ton of real fancy stuff going on in this deck, to be perfectly honest. There's a little bit, and I'll tell you about it in the neat moves. But when it comes to setting the scene, it's just basic stuff. Get your ramp going because you want to have that. You want to have uh, Halana be able to use that two mana ability, and you basically want to do it as often as you can. So you know you're gonna need that. That's a mana hungry ability there. So luckily, a lot of our Death Touchers are quite cheap. But you know, just to highlight one of the sort of different types of ramp we have going on in this deck is uh, we have Frontier Siege in here. This is another card that does double duty. It's both abilities are really great. So Frontier Siege is the three and a green enchantment. Enters the battlefield, you choose cons or dragons. So cons at the beginning of your ma uh, of each of your main phases. Each. This is the very important part. Um, you just add green, green. So Frontier Siege covers Halana's ability like twice, basically. If you do one in the ma first main and one in the second main. So that's really great. But secondly, dragons... Whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, you may have it f uh, fight target creature you don't control. Listen, it's not going to come up too often, but there is a world where dragons is the right pick because you because we've given all of our creatures death touch, and then you start to play some of the black flyers we have in this deck, and they come in and just ping things just like that. They just fight. Baron saying you're being uh, one of the reasons you might you might do that. That's more of a late game thing. Uh, honestly, I think like 90% of the time you're going to be picking cons and, and it's excellent when you do pick cons. So there you go. Uh, another good card that we want, uh, Sean's going to tell us about, and this is, uh, we don't, oh, this is a, a signature card for a Mandy Hell's toolbox yeah, here. It's an arcane lighthouse. It's a land taps for colorless, but you can also pay one and tap it until end of turn creatures, your opponent's control lose hexproof and shroud and can't have hexproof or shroud. So this is obviously... People protect their commanders by putting boots and greaves on them. This is a way around that. Absolutely. Um, it's going to... I love this card. It obviously doesn't target anything itself. It just... It does it. It doesn't target players. So it's very tough to get around an Arcane Lighthouse out there. I think it's one of the best utility lands. And it, and again, like if you're trying to target anything, if your commander targets things, this card should be an auto-include, auto I think. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, Every deck's got room for a couple colorless lands. Mm -hmm. the, the, so just think about like this game plan needs to be able to target things. So Absolutely. like obviously Arcane Lighthouse is one of them. Absolutely. So let's start talking about what we call the vegetables around here, which is really the base, the heart. And this is in this case, it's it's death touch creatures and it's the different ways we're going to get these death touch creatures. So let's start off with just reading a few of the ones that have native death touch. So weirdly enough, they're they're most of the death touch creatures in here are, are green. Uh, Deadly Recluse is a great one. One on a green, one, two, reach, death touch. Simple. Um, great defender. We want these, we want cheap death touchers to come in so we can pay for Halana's ability so that it's like a four mana play in total, which is nice. Um, ambush Viper, one on a green, flash, death touch, two, one. This is great. Gives us the flash ability as well, right? Uh, and, I, and I mean, I don't need to go on too much with this. We've got some one mana ones, some options. You know, we got some other ones, a little more flavorful like, uh, like the Ambush Viper here. But those are just two nice little examples. Uh, Sean, why don't you read some of the equipment that's going to be granting us Death Touch? Sure. Basilisk Collar, thanks to a secret pack reprint. It's gotten <laughs> way cheaper. It's a single mana artifact equipment. Uh, equips for two. Equipped creature has Death Touch and Lifelink, but Death Touch also. Uh, and Gorgon Flail. Uh, Gorgon being the Medusas. Uh, that sounds like very. it's going to be Death Touch for sure. It's a two mana artifact. Equips for two. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has Death Touch. No lifelink, but uh, oh, I'm surprised this card is as expensive as it is. It's a couple bucks. I think it was like the poor man's basil Basilisk Collar for a while, and I think that made it kind of more expensive. Cause I also, right, because if you weren't willing to pay twelve or whatever, yeah. you would will you'd pay two bucks. Exactly. For this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah, simple stuff. These guys grant death touch on your um, on your creatures that you already have. Uh, we also have a couple of ways to give death touch just on attacks, which again, because we're trying to clear the way and we're trying to get through, is actually still a very viable option. One of the best ways in all of Magic is Olran Frostfang. Three green, green attacking creatures you control have death touch. It's a snow, it's a snow creature, so that you know you got some Caldheim cards that that might work with now. It's, yeah. it's a two six, and it also says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Again, another 
card that's doing double duty in this deck. This is exactly what we want. Give our guys death touch and then actually have an effect from when we hit, when we clear the way. Um, also uh, in this uh, category is a classic Bow of Nylea, one green green, legendary enchantment artifact. Attacking creatures you control have death touch. And you can pay one or green, tap it. You can put a plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Or it deals two damage to target creature with flying. Or you gain three life. Or you can put four cards from your library on the bottom of your library. Sorry, from your graveyard on the bottom of your library in any order. Probably going to be just boosting up creatures to get them through. That's probably going to be the thing you choose nine times out of ten. But, you know, those other options can come in handy sometimes. Obviously, we're just here for the death touch for the most part. And then finally, there's some other like different ways to do it, and Sean's going to take those. Sure, archetype of finality for black, black enchantment creature Gorgon, right? Gorgons. Oh yeah, Gorgons with the death touch. Uh, it's two three, and it says creatures you control have death touch, and creatures your opponents control lose death touch and can't have or gain death touch. <laughs> all of these archetypes do something where you get all of it and your opponents get none of it. In this case, it's death touch. And we're also going to be running Ogre Slumlord, three black, black, Ogre Rogue, Ogre Rogue, three, three. Fun to say. Very fun to say. Ogre Whenever Rogue. another non-token creature dies on the board anywhere, you may create a one, one black rat creature token. Rats you control have death touch. Great. This guy's one of the best things to have when you have death touch around, right? It's really good stuff. Whenever another non-token creature dies... This means that whenever we kill one of our opponent's things, we get a rat. Uh, yeah, a death touch rat. It's not the one. It's not. I, I always think of this card as stuff you control dies, but it's not. Mm. It's like your stuff's no. turning into rats. No, 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 no. It's, it's everyone's stuff. So another one that works perfectly, gives us more mm-hmm. death touchers, gives us, you know, when those guys come into play, you can have Alana do her thing as well. Um, okay, so there you go. That's the sort of army of death touch creatures, creatures of that ilk and stuff like that. You know the strategy. You know what we're working with. So let's start talking about all of these neat moves. Working on our neat moves. We're just going to take a second to handle a little bit of business. And the main point is, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of our comedic takes and offbeat decks, consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell to make sure you don't miss anything. And if you're loving our stuff and want to support further, the best way is to head over to patreon.com slash Find out how our generous patrons keep our show growing and how you can get in on the brewing action too through our Discord. Or, if you'd rather, just hang out and play some games with like-minded commander players. Now, let's get back to those anytime moves. All right, so first we're going to start off with um, a little bit of a reanimator package that we're working with in this deck. Um, Because if we kill a bunch of our opponent's creatures... It's really great to just bring them back, but on our side. That's just a that's that's what I that's what I think of when I think of killing my opponent's creatures. They're not gone. They're just they're gonna come back later. So uh, let's take a look here at Beacon of Unrest. Bit of a classic as well. Three black black sorcery. Put target artifact or creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, and then you shuffle this into your library. Um, this is I always forget that this can also get an artifact and. That may be, uh, that may come up. We don't know. Uh, a really solid way to do this also is with Sepulchral Primordial. Five black black for the five four avatar with Intimidate. When this enters the battlefield for each opponent, you can put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Really, 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 really good one. This is also a good one to, if you want, you can just raise dead it yourself if you if it's in your graveyard somehow and then you get even a huge cheap. Oh, um, yeah. You get a, production there uh and this one's interesting this one works well with our strategy dread slaver three black black zombie horror three five whenever a creature dealt damage by dread slaver this turn dies return it to the battlefield under your control that creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types so obviously uh you need something you need some things to come together for dread slaver to do its thing reliably uh one of those things could be an archetype simply just an archetype of finality you have that out when Dread Slaver enters, you do Halana's ability with it, and bam, that whatever this whatever it kills, you're gonna get back. Um, there are some other ways, which I think you're gonna see as we go forward here. Uh, just keep Dread Slaver in mind. Obviously, if it like attacks and you know you put a Death Touch uh, equipment on it, or we have a Bow of Nile or something, obviously it does that too. But there's some even some other neat little ways. So uh, we'll see going forward here. Uh, two little two little cards that I, I included to sort of 
um, support this strategy. And I'm loving, I'm liking these cards more and more. The more, like, I've been playing Commander the last couple weeks, and the more I see these cards, the happier I am in games in general. And, Sean, I want to get your thoughts on this. It's Temple Bell, which is three-mana artifact tap. Every player draws a card. And Howling Mine, the two-mana artifact that's at the beginning of each player's uh, draw step. You, you, If it's untapped, okay, uh, that player draws an additional card. So I liked, I've always, I just like the ability of getting cards in people's hands because especially if we're going for you know i want to kill your creatures i want you to have creatures for me to kill first of all i need you to have them and and then so i can kill them and then i can reanimate them so it works better that way it also works if we're putting cards in people's hands they don't know we're trying to reanimate stuff and they just start ditching their expensive creatures that can be really good for us right also in general i'm finding that i like these cards because they make the games move faster but not in an art like not really in an artificial way. You know what I mean? Like, like the game still progresses one turn at a time. We're still laying lands and ramping like normal. But, like, this is just getting everyone consistent stuff. No one's sitting there not doing anything. They're drawing out of problems. And every game I've played in the last little bit where one of these two cards is, is uh, in play, we've had great games. Because pe- everyone's doing stuff. It's very interactive. It's, like, it's a lot of fun. So what do you think of that? I agree. It's no surprise that everyone having more cards makes games flow better. You could almost like like Commander could have evolved. We've already got a hundred card deck. It could have evolved and like way way more life. It it could have developed where everyone just drew two at the beginning of every draw step. Yeah. Right. Like that that could that could be the standard, and it would still be. I know we're going to get into corner cases where like Nekusar players are like Nekusar is better now. And then like those things. So, uh, but I think taking Nekusar out of the picture where we're not weaponizing the life game exactly as you draw cards makes sense to me, right? Like, like let's just have, let's just get more magic happening. Let's accelerate the game. Let's have more things happen. Yes. Your opponent's, also have more resources as do you but everyone moves up at the same amount over time on average obviously the first person goes through. Oh, again i'm not going to debate right. the yeah, tiny yeah. edges of yeah, it yeah. but yeah yeah it it makes perfect sense like we've also talked about the possibility of like lowering the average life lowering the starting life total to about 30 just to see how that affects games makes them a little spicier a little choppier um in a good way a little punchier so yeah, why I love them. I love them. Yeah, it's um, Temple Bell is, I think, a little bit better just because it pays us off kind of at the same time. Like you wait till a go around mm. of the table, and then uh, right on the end step of the previous player, then you do it right, and then it's like okay, yes, you get you, you get the first dip. Yeah, you, then you get the first dip. So like, it's a little bit better. Howling Mind is is still, but it's still up there. I think it's like I, I really, yeah, I. I I think these are worth a slot, and I think they're, and I think it's just for the game in general. It might not even be for the specific deck. Like, like you can then, of course, put a few things in that might help just you more than it helps other people. That's, I think, that's a fine thing to do with these cards as well. But I also really think it's just making the whole experience of Commander the game better if yeah. we're including these. And and you know what? Listen, if someone has one out, you don't have to play it if you don't want. You know what I mean? There's, there are situations where you don't have to, you don't have to play the card or you don't have to tap the temple bell right so um but i promise you you will play them and it's going to be good people aren't gonna like temple bell specifically like is chem work in your favor extra like where like like, we all know you're going to use it on my end step before your turn begins but you get to have that and it's like hey are you not doing so well hey let's just draw a card let's have everyone draw a card right yeah uh that's that's a political move a good one too, yeah. right? That everyone's gonna, yeah. I think these these are good. These are good cards. It's that, these are definitely it's that good touch cards. of group hug that makes that a real strategy, a real political strategy. It makes it, it, that you can include, and it's like it's equal card. Adv- it's equal card advantage after the fact. Obviously, like obviously, I have to spend the mana and the card to to play it. Yes. So in that way, I guess it is <clears throat> negative card advantage for the person playing it. But I think overall, you get back. What you get back in like political clout in in a in a game of commander, I think, is well worth it. And I think <clears throat> outside of the game part of it, what you just gain from having it be a better game 
for yeah. you, for you and your three friends or four friends or whatever, I think is well worth it. Well, well and worth let's it. also consider, right? Like, like one of the reasons cards get expensive is because the, the low mana costs get so cramped and it's like, well, I can, I have to run one CMC cards and two CMC cards and all the, and tutors. This just takes the pressure off of all of that. Like, because you have double the resources, AKA cards. So you don't have to like, I have to make the most out of every single card. If I don't have the, the strictly best version of these effects, my deck is a failure. That you don't, you no longer have to feel that way because they're like, well, yeah, I've got lots of options now. They don't all have to be, I don't have to cast them all at once because I won't get more. Like, like it just, it kind of frees up the, the, the space there. I think whenever you're looking at a thing as how good it is for the table, that is like, that is definitely one philosophy of gameplay that is like, these cards are perfect for. Right. Well, th- speaking of draw, we do have some, we do have some forms of draw that only help us. Uh, you know, we're not, uh, we're, we're not a group hug deck. Uh, in fact, we're quite the opposite. We are trying to kill as many of our opponent's creatures as possible. Uh, so why don't you take the, these two specifically? I mean, one, oh, one sure. is like an old school classic. One is like a bit of a newer card. The new card, Chevel, Chevel, Bane of Monsters, Black Green for a 1-3 legendary human rogue from Ikoria. He's got Death Touch, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponents control no permanents with bounty counters on them, you put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. Mm. And whenever any permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, you gain three life and you draw a card. So to simplify it, in case those words there was too many, it just was too verbose. At the beginning of your upkeep, you put a, a mark on a card <laughs> that, that's your prey. And when that prey dies, you draw a card and gain three life, and you get to start over on your next upkeep. You can't put more than one mark out at a time. Uh, Shovel won't put a second one out. And Shovel has to be around when that creature dies to see, to, to collect on the bounty, right? Like you can't, Shovel collects the bounty. If he's already dead, bounty doesn't collect. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. There are some cards that work the opposite of that, though, right? There are some cards, there are some cards where, like, the know, counter grants the thing yeah. of, like, the drawing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shevel has to see it down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then there's another one here. Oh, sorry. Here, I'll just do it. I have it right here. It's okay. Harvester of Souls. A classic. Yes. Four black black. Uh, it's a demon. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Death touch. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you may draw a card. So... Again, working on both sides of the coin here. It's our ETB Death Touch Halana thing. It's also drawing us cards with Diggs Die. Super good card and like just a real true staple of card draw if you're looking to like get it at this level. This like kind of six mana big creature level if you're cool with that. If your deck wants that sort of thing. This is a great, great source of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, okay. So... Um, so, you know, like I said, we got some draw, we got some draw for ourselves. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not just doing it for the whole table. Um, but then we talked about getting big, right? We talked about, uh, uh, some of the, the, the payoff in a different way of making our creatures get big and getting through. And, uh, and, and that's one of the main things this deck is looking to do. So Sean, you have actually already mentioned one of these, uh, cards, uh, and yes. it's a, it's a good one. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and take these next three? Okay, so Yeheni, Undying Partisan, two in a black, Aetherborn Vampire, two, two, haste. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, token or non token, doesn't matter, put a plus one plus one counter on Yeheni. And Yeheni is also a sack outlet, which mm-hmm. is fantastic. Uh, sack another creature, Yeheni gains indestructible until end of turn. Um, for three mana, this is a fantastic, uh, a fantastic. Sack outlet. Yeah, just a great utility card in that. Like it's got haste. It, you know, it's 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 getting bigger when things die. It's get gets indestructible. It's crazy. Yeah. In the face yeah. of a board also, wipe, this is a this is a this is a mean card to face uh, into your board wipe. Well, yeah, you, like it, you need is board wipe protection. You, your opponents can't cast a board wipe that just destroys creatures because you'll sack one. Yehani's indestructible, and now Yehani will be like a. I don't know, 15 15 because of all the right. creatures that died on your opponent's side. It's just, it just halts all board webs that aren't exiles. Absolutely. Uh, powerful card. 
Uh, we're also running Obnixilus Unshackled for Black Black for a Legendary Demon. Flying and Trample, 4-4. Four, four. Bit small for 6 mana, but we get something for it. Whenever an opponent searches their library, that player sacrifices a creature and loses 10 life. <laughs> um, I have done some digging before in a deck that ran Obnixilus. There are not many ways to force your opponents to shuffle their libraries. Not, yeah. But one way that does work is the... It's not a super powerful card. I think it's called Field of Ruin. It's that land that lets you destroy a non-basic and each player searches for a basic, puts it into play, and shuffles their library. So, like, uh, you, that's not a May. So, like, that Field of the Dead is... Not Field of the Dead. Field of the... Field of Ruin? Field of Ruin. Yeah, Field, Field of, of Ruin, Ruin is, the, is one of the few ways you can force a shuffle. So, I do always run that when Obnixilus is in the deck. Uh, and of course, Singir themselves, the the leader of the deck, getting two plus one plus one counters. Um, yeah, that's great, right? And you you um, and like like we said, though, that ability comes up. I think Fertilid also is unless it's a May. I think Fertilid might be a May. No, it's uh, not. It's know. not a May. Not a May. Yeah, Fertilid okay. does it too. So you can remove a counter from Fertilid and target a different player, and they have to search their library. They don't have to find. Obviously, they probably would want to, but. That's interesting. Yeah, I didn't even think of, of that aspect of it because generally speaking, when you play Obnixilus, people just don't crack their, or they'll crack whatever, like Evolving Wilds, Fetch Lands, all in response to Obnixilus being cast. Uh, they try and get those things done before he's out there. So, you know, that that, mm -hmm. that ability doesn't come up too often. Usually it's like a desperation mode thing where, like, they have to do something to survive. So they try and, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll crack it in the face of that and lose 10 life. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, the, of course, the move, the move with Obnixilus. How, how, is, what is this move? Is the genius or grifter? Okay. Someone plays a cultivate, and you wait until they pick up their deck and start looking through it before you mention the Obnixilus trigger. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, because they can't, they can't undo it. Like, like they, like they've looked through their deck, so it's just like, I'm sorry, you, you, you picked it up, didn't look through it. That's a search. I mean, like you, you can't deny that that's not a search. I feel like in commander, and now you have information. <laughs> in a friendly commander game, I feel like that's more grifter than genius. You know? Okay. Okay. I think, I, I think it leans towards grifter. I mean, it's nothing. You just have to announce the trigger, though, don't you? Like, if it's happening you or is it like just good etiquette to announce a trigger when it's happening i just mean like like because like i'm assuming the player forgot about that that right. obnixilus did that yeah, yeah and yeah. so you suspecting they forget wait until they actually pick up their deck and start looking through it and be like okay that was a search so here you lose 10 life from obnixilus sack a creature please <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's it's leaning towards grifter though there's nothing there's nothing technically wrong with that but like i that's a classic grifter move. wouldn't nothing do that to wrong. anyone i wouldn't <laughs> do that i would let someone go oh okay i won't actually do it. i didn't see optics there um okay and we talked about getting through getting connecting that's the second part of the deck kind of we got some payoffs and one of the big payoffs is that we clear the way and we let our, our creatures get through so some of the things that we want to connect with our opponents um one of them is Elbrus the Binding Blade. Seven mana for the equipment. Equip creature gets plus one plus O. Oh. When it deals combat damage to a player, you unattach Elbrus and transform it into Withengar Unbound, the 1313 legendary demon. Flying, intimidate, trample. Whenever a player loses the game, put 13 plus one plus one counters on Withengar Unbound. Really on theme with the um, loses the game trigger with Baron yeah. Singer in here. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. And I mean, you know, it's just whenever you can include uh, Elbrus, the Binding Blade, I think you should when it makes sense to do so in a deck. Similarly, this is a card that I like never include in a deck, even if even when it does make a lot of sense. This is the first time I've included this card in, I think, any commander deck. But it's not bad. It's Storev, Dev Karen Lich, one black, black and a green. So four total for legendary zombie elf wizard. You got like half of your party there. Just zombie elf wizard. Uh, it's a 5-4 trample. And it says, when uh, Storev deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, return to your hand target creature or planeswalker card in your graveyard that wasn't put there this combat. So it's very, very specific, right? So basically it just says, re return a creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, it just can't have, it just can't have, 
died that combat. It can't be something that it can't be store of basically. It can't be another creature that attacked, right? So yeah, you can't you can't like suicide your team and just be like, oh, I got this sick creature. I'll attack with it, and if you trade with it, doesn't matter. Starve gets it back. It's like exactly. no, Starve doesn't get that back on the suicide attack, but next turn they will. Exactly. And so a couple things things why I like this card in this deck. One, it has trample. It's a five four with trample. So like trample works well with death touch. We know about that. That's well documented. Um, also, it works well with the idea of uh, like getting. Um, Getting a, 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 a Death Toucher in uh, with a Halana's trigger, and then like maybe doing like a fight or something with uh, either with, with uh, another creature, you can get two kills that way, and then Storv can just bring that creature back. Uh, obviously, there's like sacrificing shenanigans we can do with that sort of thing, and then if Storv can connect, we can get the creature back. So there's a lot of cool things that actually work really well with this pretty like narrow ability but it, but still a very solid ability and there is a planeswalker in this deck and you could run a few more planeswalkers if you wanted but i think we we do have one so you know we might be able to get her back um i just want to clarify for the rules it's it, the 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 combat kind of like timing trigger watches for creatures dying during the combat phase right so even if it wasn't combat damage true if we're in combat this combat and something dies because you activate a fight mm -hmm. hoping to be like ah but this wasn't combat damage it still won't work that way it still has to be prior to combat true yeah it has happened in one of the main phases or outside of that um mm -hmm. and then finally uh we have a couple different equipment i mean we've already m mentioned uh El elbrus but i've also got in here mask of memory uh, which is a, a very underrated uh, card in commander two two mana for an equipment whenever an equipped creature deals combat damage to the player you may draw two cards and if you do discard a card equips for one this is good this is better than draw a card yeah right you draw two cards and you and you discard one so it helps get some things in your life in your graveyard which you can take advantage of with a few cards in the deck and um uh yeah equips for one so uh very very reasonable equip cost there very good card and then sean this is the one of the maybe one of the best cards oh, yeah. in the deck and it, again works with both sides of the coin here yeah, Bell Bay Corrupted Observer. We did a deck tech on this commander not too long ago. Black Green, Legendary Zombie Elf, 2-2. Two, two. At the beginning of each player's post-combat main phase, that player adds colorless, colorless, that is two colorless, for each of your opponents who lost life this turn. So if you do combat damage, that works. If you do damage another way, that also works, uh, as we exploited. So and you're potentially getting six mana on your second main phase, which is fantastic to pay for uh, Halana's ability costs colorless or generic. So yeah. it works perfectly. You can get a few activations out of that. Exactly. And oftentimes just the one hit from Bell Bay is, is great. Uh, if you want the other two to gain the other things, it's great as well. So uh, obviously just keeps getting better that way. So that's just another great way to, uh, to, to get rewarded for actually connecting uh, mm -hmm. two more cards here. Um, to finish us off with the neat moves, uh, this is the Planeswalker I was talking about. Vraska Swarms Eminence 2 and 2 Hybrid Golgari for a 5 loyalty uh, Vraska. Whenever a creature... She has a static ability. It's from War of the Sparks, Young Common. Whenever uh, a creature you control with Death Touch deals damage to a player or Planeswalker, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on that creature. So obvious, pretty obvious synergy there. And then we have a minus 2 that says create a 1-1 one, one black assassin creature token with Death Touch. And whenever it hits a Planeswalker, you destroy the Planeswalker. So she creates Death Toucher. She rewards the Death Touchers for getting in. I mean, it's a four mana, five loyalty Planeswalker. Like, you don't even have to do anything. You don't even have to activate her ability for her to be good in this deck. So I, I like that quite a bit. And, John, I think wow. you're going to... I, I'm glad that it ended up with you reading this one. I, I would have given it to you anyways because I think you're going to like this card quite a bit. Okay, let's see. Shriveling Rot. It's an instant. It's two black black. This would be the surprise in Discovery. One. Choose one until end of turn. Whenever a creature is dealt damage, destroy it. Or, until end of turn, whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, that creature's controller loses life equal to its toughness. Yikes! And it has entwined for two and a black, so you can have everything work. Yeah. This is a fantastic card. This is just over a gumball. It's a rare from Darksteel. And so we t talked about Yeheni being a wrath-proof I love wrath proofing your decks, uh, but shriveling rot is also a way 
to like sort of punish players for playing rats. Now you also will lose the life as your creatures die, but we've mentioned a lot of little death touchers with not a lot of toughness. I suspect we will be able to get into a situation where if someone tries to wrath the board, they will pay for it a lot more than we will, which is very nice. Yeah, it is very nice. And like, yeah, wrath protection. This also just works with a big swing from us. If we, if there's blockers and stuff like you can, and again, uh, and I think you're, we're going to lean on the second ability more. The, uh, uh, whenever a creature is put in a graveyard from play, that creature's controller loses life equal to its toughness. That is going to be, I think what we're going to lean towards. Um, it's, it's obviously situational, but I think that we can engineer the board state so that this is, this can finish a game for you. Like line up, they, they, like you, you swing in, they line up blocks they have a lower life total, like you're going in for the kill, and then, okay, fine, you block, shriveling rot, and that does that's what does it. I, I think that can definitely happen a lot. Neat, neat little discovery there. Yeah, um, it will give your opponent's creatures death touch as well, but I'm assuming they're looking at it like... That's only if you do both sides. Yes, yeah, yeah. I guess I was just referring to, like, if you plan on, like, oh, you're doing all these blocks, thinking your creatures aren't dying for some reason... Not true. Not true. Yeah, your creatures are definitely going to die, and and you're going to lose life. It's like a little damage to the face. Mm -hmm. um, so we put this deck together a long time ago. I, I didn't write down the exact Discord helpers, and now it's like ages ago in the chat, but I just wanted to give a shout-out to our Discord in general. We had uh, we had a big Jackbox game the other night uh, mm -hmm. with a bunch of people from our Discord, and it was a true blast. We had a lot of fun. Um, if you're familiar with Jackbox... Uh, you know, um, I love it was so fun playing with like different people than we normally play with. Like I play with a group of my friends who I know what they think is funny. I know what they're going to like the answers to. Uh, Sean said the same thing. It's the same with everyone. Right. Um, and we had to deal with some we had to deal with a new meta of Jackbox with our uh, with our patrons in, in Discord. And it was a, it was a blast and certainly not the last time that's ever going to happen. So. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to everybody in, in our Discord. And hey, if you're not super active in the Discord and you and that sounds like fun to you, I mean, you know, just reach out uh, if you're in there and you would like to become a part of that because we'll definitely make it happen. Um, and, okay, great. So uh, we talked about uh, we talked about Discord. So I do believe that it is now time for the budget report. <laughs> All right, so um, today's budget, it's, you know what, I, it's its a little higher than I'd like for this style of deck. Like, this isn't a hyper-competitive deck. This one came in market price around 130 and I didn't look to see if there's any, like, weird anomalies with TCG, which can sometimes happen. Um, but I did, but on a different website, it was a little bit lower than that. It was, like, around 115 or something like that. So somewhere in that in that area. Uh, the TCG low was 80 um which is which is fine uh but you can get that down with a few uh a few little cuts here so let's just take a look at some of the more some of the pricier cards this first one sean yeah you know about this one yeah thornbite staff too generic for a tribal artifact shaman equipment um equips for four whenever a shaman comes into play you can attach thornbite staff to it but really the value comes from equipped creature has two tap this creature deals one damage to target creature or player, and whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, untap this creature. There is a potentially free untap trigger on this card, which makes it viable in many combos. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so expensive. In this deck, we're hoping to just pay the two and have a death touch creature deal a damage to something, and it will untap because... We will always kill things unless a spell or an activated ability intervenes somehow. So as long as you've got two mana, you can just machine gun down as many creatures as you have that mana available. So, like, yeah, it's expensive and for good reason. Yep. Um, I think in this deck it's probably it's probably a cut. Like, it is, yes, it is. It does exactly what we want, but it's not, like, the super most efficient thing, and it's not some game winning combo either so i think you can cut this if you're looking to save a few bucks uh okay. next is surprisingly oran frostfang this is our boy this is our preview card one of our preview yeah. cards 
from the set and it, it's up to eight bucks and let me tell you it's for good reason this card is really good i think like myself i've been underrating this card for a long time and um but it has a has a big uh, impact on the game um especially if you're obviously you have to be an attacking kind of creature based deck but that's that's where we like to live so in this deck it's essential i you know you can cut it but i if we're, if we're going to hang on to one like over five dollar card this is this would be the one i would do my best to hang on to because i think it just does everything the deck wants to do i mean you can look at this and like we were all kind of making fun at uh elder was it elder gargaroth what's that five mana green creature that just puts bane slayer to shame yeah yeah so like that's also five mana and Orin Frostfang is arguably way better <laughs> uh because i mean it it's got the same size toughness doesn't have reach or vigilance but but like it can draw you dozens of cards it gives all your creatures death touch so you can turn every creature into another card or they just can't afford to block them or they're trading resources for it it's just like it's there's so much value packed in here and i'm not surprised it's that expensive it's a lot of value it, it does require you to have a bunch of other creatures and for you to be able to attack i will say that like it's not like well, it's just I mean, automatic right like be able to attack in the sense that you're allowed to attack because your opponents are in a very tough position they're either like lose something on defense or give you a card and not lose something like that's not a bad position to be in yeah no for sure but i just mean like if you are at a point in the game where like oh man i i can't be turning my guy sideways i need to block oh, I see. you know what i mean like I, yeah <laughs> he's not gonna help you out there but you know uh, that's the beauty of commander is that you know you, we don't have to worry about that stuff that's for limited players <laughs> that's for you know that's for constructed right <laughs> worried about that stuff um uh oh and our, our third card third card here I just yeah nixless unshackled yeah. this is the losing 10 life from searches yeah this card's up to six seven bucks depending where you go um I think that's just a reprint thing. I don't think that's... There's nothing about this card that's especially broken that I know of. I mean, it's a lot of damage, and there are a few ways to force a search, but you got to jump through some hoops. Yeah, um, I, it's certainly not something we really need in this deck. So I I would say, yes, it's nice, that, especially that, like, <laughs> that first ability, that crazy ability. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to have, but uh, but you don't need it, so you can save the save the six bucks here. Other another notable card, I don't have any. I didn't have anything that I would like include if I had an endless budget or anything like that. I mean, I think it's just basic stuff like, you know, whatever. Not even worth mentioning. Like demonic tutor. Oh, great. Yeah, sure. I'd put it in. Whatever. No big deal. But what I did want to point out is that Balaged Recovery, to an agree, the uncommon from Zendikar, the return. It's the uh, it's the recover, and then it's a it's the MDFC on the other side. It's the tap land three dollars yeah three u.s dollars for the uncommon this started out as i ordered 12 of them for 25 cents each nice this is i feel good about that <laughs> for sure i feel good about calling that this card is like an auto include now in in commander as well don't sleep on the other versions the white one that protects the black one that even brings a like malakir rebirth i think it's called mm -hmm. the, yeah. the black those are also the uncommons. Those are same thing. They might not be quite as like uh, heavily included as Balagad Recovery because I think Balagad Recovery is like a good amount better than them. But the opportunity cost is so low that it's the same thing for me. Those cards are basically auto includes. And then I mean I don't know where the rares are at. I didn't see, but like the kill spell that's the rare, the board wipe that's oh, the. Yeah. I mean these are just cards that are just free to include essentially now. So. We've talked at length about this, about MDFCs, but I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm surprised that it happened so quickly. Like we're not even out of Zendikar block yet, and this is already at three dollars. This is that's insane. It's an uncommon. Like this card just, I, I thought maybe it would hit a dollar, dollar, like half of that price, like dollar fifty, maybe. The rare kill spell is fifty cents. What's up? That's a black. Yeah. That's a that's a very reasonable kill spell in black that is basically just a land if you don't need it it's fine like you <laughs> that card should be more expensive yeah that's wild to me hey, oh, 50 cents wow i think i feel like it was more earlier anyways um so you know if you don't have your balaged recoveries i mean get them while they're get hot them, i guess i don't know yeah i guess i they must be 
getting a little bit of play in standard too, which doesn't surprise me. Anywho, uh, I don't think they are. No, um, no. Maybe this uh, that, that would that would be just pure commander then doing that. Yeah. Um. Well, Sean, we. Um, is it time? It is time. It is time. Okay. Go and get your text on. Okay. Uh, it's an okay. exciting time, and we are going to go and check out the Adric Awards. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here tonight. I see so many wonderful people in the audience. So many people. Uh, uh, Vraska. Vraska has made it here. You'll be happy with the, this this week's deck, Vraska. A lot of death touchers. A lot of, a lot of snake-haired folk. Yes, yes. Great. And, and always a pleasure to see you. Uh, um, I'm sorry I'm blanking on your name. Hannibal. Sounds of the Lambs, Anthony Hopkins, Sir oh, Anthony Hopkins. Oh, wow. You forgot Sir Very Anthony Hopkins' name. Very, Very embarrassing. 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 embarrassing for you. You know what it is? Because you lose yourself in the roles, I don't even see Sir Anthony Hopkins. I see the character. Yeah, absolutely. Odin to me, always. <laughs> uh, the Allfather. Uh, we are here to give away a single award tonight, and it is a fantastic one, and it is a absolutely uh, wonderful one. It is a fashion award, and it is the winner the Audric for the bird as a hat fashion award. And it goes to Issa Reth, the awakener. Uh, yes. Issa Reth, the awakener. There you are with what I can only assume is a bird as a hat and you win the Audric for the best fashion award. Issa Reth, thank you very much for being here. Uh, a card that works well, in the deck also a little death toucher with a little ability as she attacks. So that's what we like to see. Guys, it's been a lot of fun. Um, thank you much. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, we'll see you guys next week with a brand new deck tech. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you love what we're doing, consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash commanders brew. And if you want to get any of the cards from our deck list, go to our TCG player affiliate link below. That helps us out too. And for a free way to help us out, consider sharing the show with some friends. Like and subscribe, add a comment or two. See you later. Bye.